The constant revolutionising of production, everlasting uncertainty and agitation. All fixed relations are swept away. All that is solid melts into air. Well, if that sounds like the non-stop pace of our high-tech modern world, it was actually Karl Marx's description of capitalism 170 years ago. But today's critics of the onward march of free enterprise are not just confined to the far left. Some traditional champions of the market economy are also calling for a rethink. Our political editor, Gary Gibbon, is in Westminster. Gary. You got a flavour of changing times at the CBI conference in Paul's report earlier. There's Boris Johnson going to the CBI in an election and withdrawing a tax cut promise that he himself has been repeating again and again right up to uh, his moment of turning up there. And he also, uh, in the process, uh, withdrew, as it were, the argument that Tories have been using for that tax cut. Uh, another sort of topsy-turvy moment, because for a while Tories have said bring down corporation tax actually brings in more money to the Treasury. He actually said uh, by not bringing it down, he'd save money and be able to spend it elsewhere. I suspect some of what he was doing there uh, was to try and make his sums add up ahead of his own manifesto launch. Jeremy Corbyn, again, uh, the strange times we were in, uh, having listed a whole load of nationalisations, came to the CBI conference and told them he wanted local councils to be able to take control of bus services. Hardly an obvious uh, crowd pleaser for that particular audience. What we've found, though, ever since 2008 is a growing number of voices that are challenging some of the central nostrums of uh, capitalism and, and wondering whether capitalism right now is managing to bring in uh, competition where it is most needed and is spreading uh, its benefits around or just uh, accruing them for the bosses at the top. It's coming under extraordinary challenge in these very unusual times. Have a seat for a second. I'll be, I'll be right with you. I'll be right with you. <laughs> do you how, 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 how long do you want me to get? Do you want me to stop now? As soon as you can, Prime Minister. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'll be right with you. Prime Ministers don't normally get told to wind it up. But these aren't normal times, as the CBI contemplates the two main parties promising government borrowing at levels not seen for decades. It is sometimes claimed that I am anti-business. Actually, this is nonsense. When he became Labour leader, four decades of cross-party consensus crashed to earth. The leader of the opposition was now someone with this message for bankers. When they say we're a threat, they're right. But now the Labour leader, long preaching to audiences like this one about capitalism's failings, has some unlikely soulmates. Lionel Barber's been editor of the Financial Times for 14 years. Two months ago, it landed on the breakfast tables of its well-heeled readership with a shock message on its cover. You must have got some pushback for a front-page wraparound like this in September. No, I... I You're the I, finance sector's Bible. No, we, we, we can be the Bible, but there's a lot of lessons that you can read in the Bible... Were they ready ..about for how, them? Things to do, how to do things better. Were the finance sector ready for them? Yeah, I, we didn't have any pushback at all. And you've got to remember that uh, there are important business organisations that think that there's something wrong with capitalism. The world financial system almost melted down in 2008. And yet, what has happened? You've actually had a greater concentration of market power in the banks. You've had very little, uh, very few people really uh, held to account over uh, the crash. With a long career in the banking sector, Jim O'Neill is another unlikely critic. I think the business model needs to be challenged um, because... That's been holy space you don't go near. I know, I know, I'm, I, I'm the time saying come. things that are not generally expected from somebody given the background I've had, but we have colossal market failures. Three years ago, he was a Tory Treasury Minister, after years working at Goldman Sachs. In theory, when you have uh, many years of rising profits, it should lead to both greater investment spending and with its uh, evidence of greater productivity, and with that, uh, some kind of rising wages. And we've had the profit, apparent profit growth, but we haven't had the rest. And so it's not actually been working the way that uh, much of the economic theory I learned and when I had my short trousers on would have said. Capitalism's uh, broken? Not, it's, I'm not sure about it being broken. It's just not functioning in the way it should. 
Um, it needs repair. It needs uh, urgent repair, I would say. We will create a new public enterprise and we'll call it British Broadband. British Broadband. Jeremy Corbyn announcing Labour's fifth nationalisation project last week, on top of plans to double government spending on infrastructure. But who does Labour think we can learn from? We're at the launch today of a report that's been provided to the Labour Party by Graham Turner, the economist. For years, Graham Turner has been one of John McDonnell's most trusted advisers. He says the British state needs to take lessons from an economic superpower, and it's not America. The hope is that the state can bring together expertise it has which, to, yes. which can in, in, choose to invest money in certain regions, in certain technologies. Yes. Some people would say that's a throwback. Well, look, I mean, it's 70s. a throwback to what we're seeing in China, which has had a phenomenal increase in standards of living and is actually ahead of us on many areas. They're ahead of us on 5G. So tell me what China's doing wrong. Some of what they're doing could be a model for our resetting of capitalism here. People might not like to hear it, but it's absolutely true. I mean, it's not a throwback to the 70s when we bowed out British Labour, and that's a completely different story. A throwback to five-year plans, state planning? It doesn't even have to be state planning. It just needs to be a vision. I mean, that's what China's got, and that's what the states has had in the past, a vision as to what technology um, can do and what sort of opportunities it's going to provide us with. The slogan proclaims, we need a revolution. The economist Anne Pettifer isn't sure Labour's programme is radical enough. She believes the government should get a tighter grip on the banking sector. So we should manage the system. The law should be laid down to the banks. Yes. You're going to invest differently in different things. Or else there's no licence to trade. Even Labour's not saying that. No, I know, but then Labour's being very cautious. They've never careful. been more radical. <laughs> but not I... in the right areas, you think, maybe? Well, I think Labour is and always has been extraordinarily careful and cautious, especially about my finance and monetary matters. A bit really. timid with the banks. Um, awed. I think overawed on the whole. Oh, to the people! Oh, to the people! And Pettifer believes the challenges of climate change are converting some champions of the free market to the case for reforming capitalism. The fact of the matter is we face a major and an unprecedented crisis on the scale of war, really. You know, if this was the eve of the Second World War, you know, I would be sounding, I hate to, <laughs> sounding modest, like Churchill, saying we have to prepare. We have to take, you know, extraordinary action to deal with climate breakdown and the breakdown of the life support systems upon which civilization depends. Nothing less than that. And for that, we need to mobilize all the resources we have. Would you say one of the reasons that people were able to absorb this message from the Bible of the financial sector more easily than people might expect is because they know that climate change is just changing everything? Yeah, I, I do think that climate change uh, has, it really has affected people's outlook, perspectives. I think now if you sit around the boardroom table, you will he be hearing from the chief executive on climate change, what are we doing? How are we reducing our emissions? How are we going greener? That's now part of the di discussions. Boris Johnson can sometimes sound like the last man still repeating the Tory matriarch's old truths. Dynamic, free market, capitalism. Yes. When did you last hear a Tory leader talk about capitalism? He might not have joined the chorus, but radical critics of modern capitalism have now been joined by some unlikely fellow travellers. Well, joining me now is Edwin Morgan, the Director of Policy at the Business Organisation, the Institute of Directors, and from Manchester by Torsten Bell, who's Chief Executive of the Left of Centre Think Tank, the Resolution Foundation. Edwin Morgan first. Capitalism is bust, and Jeremy Corbyn got there first in recognising this. A grain of truth in that, isn't there? I, I think that there are clearly elements of the market system which are not working perfectly. And I think actually a lot of businesses would recognise that and have been saying that for quite a long time. People, I mean, the, in the uh, section we were just watching, a lot of that was focused on the city. 
the city is one part of the economy, but actually we have 28,000 members who are businesses of all sizes, all parts of the country. And, and they lot, don't need a revolution. Well, it's just that they are, you know, it's, it's, a big, it's a big picture and they don't always, they, they aren't all the same, they don't all operate in the same way and they don't, they aren't all necessarily happy with the way sometimes the banks operate or sometimes, you know, large companies, we've seen corporate failures, which have caused big problems with smaller suppliers. It's, it's not a sort of uniform picture. So many of your members would agree with the FT headline, time for a reset on capitalism. I think I'm not, I mean, resale on capitalism is quite a, a broad term. I think a lot of them, we've seen a huge amount of uh, desire among our members in recent years for more information on how they can be involved in tackling climate change, for example, one of the, the big questions that was raised. A lot more uh, interest in things like social enterprise, you know, where actually there's kind of a fusion between business and a social goal. But it's, it's definitely, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of ap appetite sorry, from businesses there. Torsten Bell, let me put that to you, that business is already getting there. There is a change going on. They just don't need a revolution. There definitely is a change going on. People are looking at too high inequality left from us from the 1980s. They're looking at a decade of stagnant earnings, unprecedented in any of our lifetimes. And then they're looking ahead to the threat of climate change and thinking we can definitely do better than this. So of course people, right from the FT through to people that you call revolutionaries think things need to change. And I think that's a broad consensus. Obviously the debate comes down to what needs to change and how do you change it in a way that reforms your capitalism, that gives you a fairer society to live in, but also gives you the prosperity that means we can pay for the public services we want and a better future. And is nationalising five industries the answer? Or is that, as the CBI says, threatening to crack the foundation of our economy? Well, look, nationalisations in general, the ones that have been talked about by the Labour Party, focusing on water, the energy grid and others, are nowhere near as big a deal as most people make out both their proponents and the critics of it. Lots of countries have nationalised utilities. What is obviously a bigger deal is the recent move last week to say that broadband should actually be provided free. And there you come to the key question, which is what are your priorities for spending it? The country has just gone through 10 years of austerity. That puts a lot of pressure to raise tax revenues to put back some of those that spending into key public services. You'll see the state of some of our prisons. There's a public pressure on the NHS and education spending. And then as we look to the future into the 2020s, we'll need to raise more money to pay for a, an older state. So really right. the issue comes down to if it's nationalised, that isn't the big issue so long as it is run well. If it's run badly, then you shouldn't do it. But let me really put, what let it me, comes down to... Sorry, let me put ahead. that back to Edwin Morgan. That actually, you know, you, people shouldn't sweat about these nationalisations. And actually, they might be vote winners, mightn't they? They, they might certainly be popular. But I, I think the question, and, and Torsten was, was alluding to this, is are they going to be run better in state hands? And I think the, the broadband is, is a really interesting example because clearly there, there are areas where the um, companies have not extended our fibre network to the places it should be. A lot of companies are, a lot of countries are ahead of us on that. But why does that mean that the government should take complete control of the whole network and provide it for free? Well, if there's market failure, though. But, but there's selective market failure in some places. Actually, the, the uh, broadband companies have built out quite a bit of fibre. They're accelerating it all the time. And we have a relatively competitive market in terms of the, you know, your actual home broadband you can get. The problem is that it's, it's too expensive to roll out to the whole country. That's the bit actually where businesses have been saying for quite a long time, some government spending on that is absolutely needed, but it's, it's to swing too far the other way to say, well, we'll have the whole network and we'll provide it for free. Torsten Bell, does Labour need to be more radical, as Anne Pettifer suggested in Gary's piece there? I don't think the problem for the next Labour government is going to be, um, has it, is it, can it be even more radical? The challenge is going to be that they set out a very, very large agenda, including uh, much, a much bigger state, not just about the nationalisations, but just spending more and taxing more to pay for it. They've set out reforms of ownership of some of our biggest companies and a whole host of other policies. So the real issue is going to be, given that the, where the polls are and given the dangers of delivering that big radical platform at the same time as trying to have a referendum on Brexit and other issues, the issue is, are you clear enough about what your absolute priorities are so that you can make sure that you deliver the change that is most important? And can you do it in a way that delivers the kind of inclusivity you want, but also the growth you want to make that happen. At the moment, if you look at business investment figures, they are absolutely dire. And that okay. is, in the end, essentially, if we're going to see growth and pay rises we all want.